Hello again, everybody. I'm Roger Hoover. Glad to welcome you back to the Crimson Tide Sports Network and a very happy new year as 2022 is underway. And of course, we're excited about football. We're excited about basketball. We're excited to have Crimson Drive driven by Tuscaloosa Toyota return to the Crimson Tide Sports Network Facebook page streaming live on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. Central. And again, the show is brought to you by Tuscaloosa Toyota. Check them out online at TuscaloosaToyota.com. Our friends at RJ Young have furnished us with this smart board to go through all of the different headlines for today. And RJ Young is the official technology solutions provider of Crimson Drive. First of all, coming up on the show today, we'll take a look back at the win for the Crimson Tide on New Year's Eve from Dallas in the Cotton Bowl as Alabama got the victory against Cincinnati. You'll hear Eli Gold give you all the highlights from that great win for the Crimson Tide as Alabama moves on to the national championship game next Monday against Georgia and Indianapolis. Also, we'll have some courtside cam highlights from the women's basketball victory against the Auburn Tigers on Sunday, the fifth straight win for Alabama against Auburn. You'll also hear our postgame interview with head coach Christy. Curry and then last night on Hey Coach presented by Alpha Insurance across the radio network and streaming live on our Facebook page. It was Alabama men's basketball head coach Nate Oates joining us to preview what's ahead for Alabama men's basketball. Start to go through our headlines starting first with the football team as today's show mostly will focus on basketball but on Thursday we'll have a very football edition getting you ready for the college football playoff national championship game that Alabama has earned a spot in thanks to the win against the Bearcats 27 to 6 in the Cotton Bowl last Friday as the Crimson Tide are once again in the college football playoff national championship game now nine the last 13 years Alabama has advanced to the national championship game as the Crimson Tide are trying to win national championship championship number 19 overall and number seven in the Nick Saban era. Coming up on Saturday night, we will have our national championship preview show. That'll be all streaming live here on our Facebook page. Also Alabama athletics and across the radio network. Still don't have a time for that show just yet, but we should have one very soon. Just make sure you come back here to the Crimson Tide Sports Network Facebook page. All of our social media outlets and rolltide.com will have the very latest. And then we do know on Monday, it'll be a four o'clock airtime from Indianapolis getting you set for Alabama against Georgia. Georgia in the national championship game. Excited about that with the Crimson Tide football team with men's basketball last week. A big win against Tennessee as Alabama closed out the game on a 16 to 5 run as the Crimson Tide defeat the Volunteers 73 to 67. And then it's been a week in between games for the Crimson Tide. You'll hear Nate Oates in our interview coming up in a little bit talk about what Alabama has done during the time off to get ready for what's coming up tomorrow night. The Crimson Tide against the Florida Gators coming up at 6 p.m. Central. Our coverage on the radio with Chris Stewart, Brian Passink, and Tom Stipe will start at 5 o'clock coming up tomorrow for the Crimson Tide on the road against the Florida Gators as Alabama is ranked 15th in the latest poll. And again, we'll hear from Hey Coach, our interview from Hey Coach last night with Nate Oates coming up in just a bit. Also, taking a look at women's basketball at the Capstone, a great win against the Auburn Tigers, 56-53, as Alabama was able to withstand a late run by Auburn to still pick up the three-point victory. And now five straight wins for the Crimson Tide against the Auburn Tigers. You look at Christy Curry and her tenure, great winning streaks against two of Alabama's biggest rivals, the Tennessee Lady Volunteers, and now the Auburn Tigers. Uh, she had a five-game winning streak against Tennessee, and now the winning streak against Auburn has gone to five straight as well. Jemiah Mingo Young held lead Alabama. Alabama to that win 14 points in the victory and next up Alabama will be at home on Thursday night against Mississippi State that'll be a 6 p.m. Central start time we hope to see you at Coleman Coliseum again we had a great home court advantage for the ball game on Sunday hope to see a lot of those fans and more coming up back to Coleman Coliseum coming up this Thursday just saw the women's basketball Headlines, and now we'll go to the rest of Alabama athletics as Rashinda Reed is the new head coach of the Alabama volleyball program here in the next few weeks. We'll be visiting with her on Crimson Drive. She's added two assistants to her staff, bringing in a lot of experience to Tuscaloosa. So more details on that, RollTide.com, as well as the diving team competing this week in Knoxville at the Tennessee Diving Invitational to start their 2022. And then gymnastics will be getting their season against Oklahoma. That's Sunday, 12 p.m. on ESPN. A lot of expectations for Dana Duckworth's team after last year winning the SEC championship had a great run as well at the NCAA championships really excited to see what's ahead for Alabama gymnastics on the show today though we'll go to first AT&T Stadium gets you set for the Cotton Bowl as Eli Gold, John Parker Wilson, Rashad Johnson, Chris Stewart were calling the game. Alabama defeats Cincinnati 27 to 6. Here's a look back at all the highlights on our booth cam from the Cotton Bowl. Here's the kick. 
Hand over end, and Jamison Williams lets it go into the end zone about eight yards deep. Brian Robinson back in the lineup now. The Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, Bryce Young, is to his left. Three wides to the left side. Bryce backpedals, looks, throws, caught, wide open. Slade Bolden, touchdown Alabama. He made the grab about the two-yard line, wide open, turned around and took it in for yet another touchdown. He was wide open because Alabama was running this bunch set. So when you got really good cornerbacks on the outside, when you get it a bunch, they've got to pass it off. You can't play man-to-man -man coverage. Two people go on the back corner route from Jamison Williams. And nice find for Bryce, finding Slade Bolden underneath, who walks right into the end zone for the touchdown. Here now, play action fake pressure, and here comes Bama on a little dunk pass that was covered up by the Crimson Tides. Daniel Wright, he saw that one and diagnosed it perfectly. It's now going to be a 26-yard field goal try again by Reichard. Three of three this season, this distance, and now four of four. So Will Reichard gives the Crimson Tide a 10-3 lead. Man in motion, Tucker from the far to the near side. Here's the snap. Ritter looks. He's going down as he eats carpet at the 20. D.J. Dale and the first sack of the ball game for Alabama. Second down and 10. Bama at the Cincinnati 44. Man in the slot left. There's a wide receiver. Two of them to the left side. Here's Bryce. Stands in. Looks. Throws near side. Behind the beam. Caught by Brooks. He is out of bounds at the one-yard line. No, they'll say he went over the pylon. Touchdown, Alabama. Ja'Cory Brooks. A 44-yard touchdown reception. He's had two of those this year. And they have been massive. Third and ten play. Play clock at four. Three. Two. They get the snap off. Bama shows pressure. Ritter steps up right into it and down he goes. That's the second sack of the ball game for the Alabama Crimson Tide. And that was helped out by Ritter just stepping right up into Dallas Turner. And he made the play. Rashad, nice pressure from Alabama. Yeah, great pressure there and great call from Pete Golden. Typical when the pressure is man-to-man -man behind it. He plays a trap defense where he has the cornerback sitting in zone, linebacker sitting in zone as well. Quarterback's confused with nowhere to go with the ball. Here's the snap. Ritter under pressure. Steps up, taken down by Anderson. The third sack of the ball game for the Alabama Crimson Tide. And that is how the first half will come to a close. It is Alabama 17, the Cincinnati Bearcats 3. On the third and 16. Bryce stands in, steps up, throws across the middle, first down. Jamison Williams, he spins closer to the midfield logo. And Rashad, big time play. Big time play, big time play call. Aligning Jamison Williams at the number three spot. Now he's matched up versus the linebacker and the safety, and he wins. They needed 16, they picked up 18. Bryce on the give, Robinson. Big hole behind the huge blocks. And he gets down to the five-yard line. Evan Neal, he cleared off half of Dallas and most of Fort Worth with that block. Second down and six. Here's the snap. Play action fake. Price across the middle. Wide open. Latu. Touchdown, Alabama. Cameron Latu wide open. A nine-yard touchdown reception, and Bama pads their lead to 23 to six. This is just a beautiful play call from from Bill O'Brien as Slade Bowden comes to the left slot position. He's going on a jet sweep motion as the ball snap. Bryce fakes it to him and then does a sprint out to the right. So Slade's going on the right to the flat. Bryce is rolling to the right also, but from Cameron Latu's right tight end position, he's peeling back to the left. Bryce throws it back to him. He just walks in end zone. Get the feeling the floodgates are about to open right here, JP. Well, you know, even if they don't, even if we don't score another point with 13.52 left to go, you remember Cincinnati burned that timeout on third and 16 where we got a sack right after that. 
Uh, they've got to do something they, they really haven't even attempted all game and that's throw the ball downfield Create some explosive plays. I think they're scared. They're not scared, but they're aware of the pass rush And that's why we, they've been calling the plays this way But Alabama the way their defense has been playing the way we've been controlling the running the running game on the offensive side of the ball I, I, It's, it's gonna take a tall task for Cincinnati to get back in this game. It really is Mathis and Dale digging in up front Here's a fourth and three Cincinnati from the Bama 22 the tie defensive front shifts to his right Ritter points with his right hand now his left sends the man in motion Here's the play action fake quarterback sacked down he goes Number five Will Anderson was there for that one sack number five and that may well have put the nail in the proverbial coffin, Rashad. Yeah, I've been running this play all game. RPO with the cross boot, with the tight end. There. Went to the well one too many times. Brian Branch and Will Anderson there to sniff it out. Yeah, Will Anderson might get the sack, but it was a play from Brian Branch that calls a sack. And not, not falling for the cheese or the fake. He stays home. Ritter has to pull up, and here comes Will Anderson. Snap and spotter there. Kick is on the way. It is up and good. And Will Wanker adds three more points for the Crimson Tide. And it's now Alabama 27, Cincinnati 6, here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Snapping the ball, gives to Trey Sanders. He'll just run it up the middle on off left tackle. And that is going to do it as Alabama hold Cincinnati to just two field goals in a 27 to 6 win and you know while there were some who wanted a new face in the college football playoffs at least half of the championship game matchup will look very familiar Bama will face the winner of Georgia and Michigan in Indianapolis a week from Monday and for the tide it could yield national championship number 19 Alabama, a winner here at AT&T Stadium with a total of 483 yards of total offense to Cincinnati's 218. The booth cam highlights presented by Royal Furniture from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas last week. And if you enjoyed watching those, don't forget, coming up on Monday night for the National Championship, our booth cam presented by Royal Furniture will be back for our three hours of pregame coverage, all of the game and some postgame as well as Alabama competes with Georgia for a national championship. And again, great way to keep up with the Crimson Tide Sports Network during the game and watch in the booth as Eli Gold, John Parker Wilson, Rashad Johnson's on the sidelines, Chris Stewart hosting the broadcast from up there we will have the booth cam so you can watch those guys as they call the game coming up on monday in the national championship game against georgia one of the other things we love to do it's not necessarily a booth but we take you courtside for basketball games for our home games inside coleman coliseum and that included on sunday women's basketball when the crimson tide were able to defeat the auburn tigers 56 to 53 let's take a look at our courtside cam highlights again you can watch all home games stream live the courtside cam for women's basketball men's basketball here's a sampling of some highlights from the Auburn game as I was lucky to be on the call and also joined post game by the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Christy Curry. Happy New Year. Here's the opening tap controlled by the Crimson Tide in the backcourt as Megan Abrams start this game with the basketball for Alabama, finding Jada Rice in between the circles. Rice looking to the post, hands off to Abrams. Abrams driving down the right side lane, throws up a shot that's good. Alabama with a quick 2-0 lead thanks to the play of Megan Abrams. Mingo Young finding Barber to left corner at three. Bop! Hannah from Homewood over the timeline. Barber. Barber flips the basketball to Abrams. Abrams bounce pass to Rice. Left alone. Left block. Left side layup. Good. Barber at the top of the key. Kicks it out to Daniel. Daniel right wing. Loads up a three. Perfect. Nia Daniel for the Crimson Tide. Abrams takes the give. Now starts to roll in. Flips up her shot, and that's good. From the right side, Megan Abrams scores. Sutton dribbles to the top of the key. Now down the right side lane. Throws up a shot. It's good. And she's fat. Abrams floats it back top of the key to Davis. Thought about a three instead of bounce pass. Right block. Rice got it. Rice puts it up and in. Basketball with Barber. Barber on the right wing dribbles to the top of the key. Bounce pass. Davis right wing. A three-pointer. Bot. Alabama 49. Auburn 40. 6.20 to go in Tuscaloosa. It's Davis. A head pick from the right side. Driving into the paint. Kicking about left side. Mingo Young. Mingo Young driving. Left side layup up. And good. Alabama.
Alabama 52, Auburn 41. 438 left to go in the fourth quarter. And for the Crimson Tide, it's an opportunity at a fifth straight win against the Auburn Tigers. Look back to the 2018-19 season, the last time Auburn was victorious against Crimson Tide, both in this building and overall. Let's her offense set up. Scott Grayson has shot partially blocked by Alabama. Three-point attempt for the right block, blocked by the tie. 27 seconds left, shot clock turned off. Auburn with the ball down by three. Wells finds Scott Grayson. Scott Grayson drives to the left baseline, throws up a shot that's no good. Rebound tipped by Wade Warren to Barber on the left baseline. 13 seconds left, and Auburn, well, Christy Curry actually will call timeout. Alabama will have Myra Gordon. To inbound the basketball in front of the tied bench on the left sideline. Gordon looks, the bounce pass into Abrams. She's got it as the buzzer sounds, and the Crimson Tide defeat the Auburn Tigers for a fifth straight time. Final score from Coleman Coliseum, Alabama 56, Auburn 53. Hey, we're now joined by the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Christy Curry. That's presented by Cook's Pest Control and Centricon, the unbeatable combination in termite protection. And, Coach, congratulations. Another win, five straight for your program against the Auburn Tigers. First of all, how'd you guys get it? done today well it was a little ugly at times and you know we we're saddled with some adversity with some foul trouble um, but you know uh, found a way to finish and just um, made some plays down the stretch you know when this game happens anything can happen so it's always interesting I'm just really proud of our team for finding a way to win an ugly game you gotta be proud as well Jemiah Mingo Young 10 points for her in the second half what'd she do yeah you know just aggressive we kept trying to explain you know we thought um, getting to the free throw line trying to get to the realm in transition I thought she got some offensive rebounds I mean she just made some toughness plays and um, that's who she is for us and really proud because she gave us a punch there scoring wise when we were, we were struggling at some other spots to make some bad what stands out to you about your defense? Not only in this game, had some great moments as well defensively in the last game against Tennessee. Well, just understanding scout tendencies, player personnel. It's something we continue to grow at. I thought we had a couple of times where we had some memory loss on those things today. But overall, I like the way the kids are sticking with the game plan. We were able to change our defenses. I thought going zone late there when we were in foul trouble, able to get some stops and rebound backside. Just really proud of our kids. Taylor Sutton came in off the bench, had five points for you in the first half. How good was it to have? It was great. You know, yesterday was her first full practice back. It's hard. You know, this this thing with COVID is tough on these kids. And, you know, to get back in the flow and the swing of things. Um, so I just credit T for sticking with it and staying strong. And, man, she gave us a big punch there both quarters, both halves. So now the Crimson Tide, one-on-one -on -one in conference play. What's the focus going to be in the next few days getting ready for Mississippi well, State? Well, I'll be real honest, Roger. we got to make free throws and we got to make open shots. We're not shooting the ball very well right now. And I think we just tell them to keep shooting it and stay positive, keep getting in and getting some reps up this week. And I think we're still getting our feet under us. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we make some shots. It's really going to help us a lot. I love what we're doing defensively. Absolutely. And we love wins against Auburn. 56-53, the final coach. Thank you for joining us. Roll Thank Tide. Thank you. And, hey, great crowd today. Thank you, everybody that came out. Absolutely. Our thanks to Alabama head coach Christy Curry with the Tide rolling to victory 56-53 against Auburn. And that was Coach Curry joining us after the win against Auburn as part of our courtside cam. She also joined me last night on Hey Coach, and we talked a lot about the Auburn game plus what's ahead for Alabama coming up on Thursday night against Mississippi State. But the last half of the show on Hey Coach featured an in-person conversation with the head coach of the Crimson Tide, men's basketball team Nate Oates, as it's been over a week since Alabama last played last Wednesday against Tennessee Volunteers starting SEC play with the win. Now games coming up tomorrow night against the Florida Gators, also on Saturday against Missouri before everyone's looking forward to next Tuesday at home against Auburn. But Coach Oates was nice enough to join us at Baumhauer's Victory Grill as we have Hey Coach on Monday night starting at 6 o'clock. It will be streaming live here on our Facebook page as well. So you'll have an opportunity to watch this conversation that we had last night. You can watch that live coming up on Mondays at 6 o'clock right back here on our Facebook page. But now we'll replay last night's conversation with Alabama Crimson Tide head coach Nate Oates. Roll Tide, Coach. Happy New Year. Roll Tide, Roger. Appreciate it. Happy New Year to you, too. Always got to like starting conference play with a win. What were your main takeaways from last Wednesday against Tennessee? You know what? Our defense was a lot better. You know, we've been on our guys about guarding better, and I thought they answered the bell. I thought we played hard on D. You know, our offense wasn't great, but, you know, we learned you can win tough games when you're, when you're guarding and playing at a high level, and I thought our effort was good. You know, if we can get that back and start making shots to go with the defense, I think that's – you know, that's when we can really start to do some damage here. So that's, uh, you know, we got to continue to concentrate on the defensive end, and I think the shots will start to drop. 
And what was the focus in practice? Because we heard about it after the Davidson game, that defense had to be the focus. Anything you guys did special leading up to the Tennessee game to really focus on defense? Anything different than what you'd done earlier in the year? I mean, we just had more defensive drills. You know, I, you know we, we kind of run our scouts. We've got an offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. And, you know, typically I probably spend a little bit more time over on the offensive side. I try to spend a lot more time on the defensive side. Just, you know, if the head coach is uh, – really spending time here it's important like I you know I, I and I probably should have been doing that earlier a little bit more just you know we, we uh just got to get our guys to understand that as talented as we are on offense that that stuff takes care of itself if uh if you guard on defense so we just get to get the intensity wrapped up you know we I think our leaders you know Quinterly had probably his three best practices leading to that Tennessee game you know we and he, he played hard and played well you know I thought Shackelford played played hard, played well. Keon Ellis, he's starting to you know get back around. You know today he led us in blue collar points in practice, so we we need that out of Keon. And you know we we didn't even play particularly well. You know uh, offensively we weren't very good at all to be honest with you. But just shows that you know we've got enough offensive firepower that when we're locked in on defense, you know even if we're not playing great on offense, we can still win big games. Visiting with Alabama head coach Nate Oates. So why don't we go to the phones for a moment? Tonight's first question is brought to you by Alabama 811. Always contact 811 before you dig to know what's below. Call 811 or visit AL811.com. Let's go down to Grand Bay, Alabama and say a big hello and roll tide to Pee Wee, who joins us now. Roll tide, Pee Wee. Roll tide, Roger. Coach, how you doing, sir? Doing good, Pee Wee. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, Y'all kind of touched a little bit on what I was going to ask about. You know, Coach Saban a lot of times talks about like when we struggle, say like for the Auburn game, and how they had to, to, to face that adversity and overcome that adversity, and, and, that, and the good that it does for your team to do that. So when you have a game like you had against Tennessee where, as you said, you didn't really play particularly well overall, your defense played good, but your offense kind of struggled, but yet they did what they had to do to win the game. How do you take that as a teaching and, and move forward into the rest of uh, in the rest of the SEC season. Yeah, I went back to what we told our group last year a lot. You know, whether you make shots or not, should really just determine the margin of victory, not whether you win or lose. You know, we we ought to be able to win games even when we're not making shots at a high level, just with our defensive intensity. I think that's what happened in the Tennessee game. We didn't shoot it particularly well. You know, Shackelford and Quinley are two of our better offensive players. They both struggled from three and really, you know, couldn't make shots. Shaq hit the big one late that we needed, that, you know, was one he, he made. But I think, you know, I think they're starting to realize that you really win games on defense. You know, obviously it helps when you make shots, and they've been in the gym. I thought they shot it particularly well in practice today, and they've been in the gym a little bit. We've got a week between games. is the most time we'll have off between games the rest of the season, you know, barring any type of, you know, cancellation due to COVID. But, you know, I, I think it, it showed our guys, you know, and, Sometimes each individual team's got to realize it for themselves. Like, we really do win games based on our energy, effort, focus on the defensive end, and that just happened, you know, in our first conference game. So, you know, we've got our first true road game coming up in conference, so we, we need to follow that up with a great, uh, great defensive effort on the road at Florida. Thank you for the call, Pee Wee. Uh, Noah Gurley, last time out, Coach, uh, 20 points, 10 rebounds, first double-double for him in an Alabama uniform. What can you tell us about the work he's done to lead to some of these great performances on the floor? Yeah, I mean, he's been one of our hardest-working guys all fall. You know, he's in the gym as much or more than anybody. You know, he's constantly in there. You know, if I ever come in late at night, you know, I see him down there working quite a bit, you know, and he's I, – I, that hard work's not going to go unrewarded. And I think, you know, he struggled there for a little bit. He's Whether it's getting used to our offense, whatever it was, just a shooting slump that happens, you know, he bounced out of it. But he, it was also, I think it helps him to see when, when you're playing hard, you just kind of lose yourself in the blue-collar stuff, the rebounds. He had 10 rebounds. You know, the offense just comes. I think he wasn't so necessarily enamored with just shooting threes outside the three-point line. He was driving the ball well, finishing inside, getting putbacks on the, you know, on the boards. And, all that. So we, you know, we're not expecting 20 and 10 every night, but we need him to continue to play better, play well, and he gives us a big lift. He gives us another dimension, you know, where he can go between the four and the five both if he's really making shots. You can still keep the four space with him at the four, and you know, he can play that spacing five as well, get a little bit different uh, look than you do with Charles in there. 
You mentioned before, lose yourself in the game. You just said it with uh, Noah. I've heard you say that before in November, December as well. Just Have you seen your guys embrace that a little more as time's gone on this season? You know what? Yeah, they have, and you just got to keep reminding them of it. You know, when you're focused on your own shot attempts, your own minutes, your your own whatever it is, you're not really losing yourself in the game. When you lose yourself in the game, you, all, all you care about is just winning the game. What, what do I have to do on this possession for us to get the best shot we can get on, on offense? What do I have to do on this possession for us to get a stop on defense? When you just lose yourself in the game trying to figure out how to win that possession, I think the rest of it takes care of itself. You know, you're able to, you know, just really, you're not, when, you're, when you overly focus on offense, I think it backfires a lot of times. When you lose yourself in a game and just let yourself play and make the right plays and play unselfish, that's when guys tend to have their better games. You know, they kind of get in that, that rhythm, that, you know, that mindset where they're just playing and trusting their work and they're really focused on doing the kind of blue collar, defensive, you know, hard, hard play and max effort type stuff, then the offense just follows and comes is what we tend to found. Crimson Tide found that in the win last week against Tennessee, and then it was a couple days later the football team played well against Cincinnati. I know you're a huge football fan. Just uh, if you enjoy keeping an eye on all the football for the Crimson Tide. Yeah, it's great, you know. It's great to be at a school where they're playing up until the last game of the season, and everybody's looking at it. You know, I was going around different places where, you know, maybe – they don't know you're the basketball coach. You got a script A on, you know, roll tide. They start talking about the football team, and it's good to be at a place where winning at a high level. I, I'm a fan. I'm a, shoot. I was a college football fan before I was here. You know, I um, now I got it. Now I got a spot I work at that we can ch keep cheering. You know, expect to win national championships. <laughs> the expectation levels around here are, are ridiculous with football. It's they're playing for a national championship every year, and it's great. I lo I love it. You know, it's. I mean, you know, this is a big, big game with Georgia, obviously. I mean, shoot, I saw Georgia, I think, is favored in the game. And, you know, obviously, they're favored the first time. We came up with a great game plan. Now, you know, this is one of those deals where you see it a lot more in basketball. You know, you play a team twice a lot, and football doesn't happen as much. Now, you know, what are the what are the adjustments going to be made? You know, that, that happens a lot more in basketball than football. So it's going to be interesting. You know, we've got – I think the best coaching staff in the country. So hopefully we make better adjustments from game one to game two, and we were better in game one than we were in, than they were. And, you know, if we make better adjustments, we'll be better in game two, hopefully. So that, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what's that like? Because you've had to turn around before a lot in basketball where you've won a matchup, and then all of a sudden you're playing again in the conference uh, tournament or something like that. Just how do you try and approach that, especially after you win the first matchup and you know the other team has revenge on their minds so much from just a few weeks ago? Yeah, I mean, it happened to us last year. All three of our tournament games, Mississippi State, we'd beat them at their place to clinch the regular season championship, played them in the first round. I thought our guys answered the bell really well. Tennessee, we'd beat them at their place early in the year. I hadn't played them for a long time, and they, they, got, they got us down. You know, I, we didn't play well particularly. We came back. I think we were down 15 in the second half, came back. And then the LSU won the championship. We'd beat them twice. You know, the one at their place was by – a really large margin and then it was a little closer at our place and you know you've got the whole you got to keep your guys minds right like even though we beat them before that doesn't mean you know nothing's guaranteed we gotta they're gonna be coming at us even harder we gotta answer all that you know and then there's the adjustments look even when you win a game you didn't do everything great in the game they, they you know they exploited this and that and they're gonna try to do this again and what can we do you know they guarded us this way how, how do we attack that so you know, it's the NBA gets a lot with the with the series. You play seven straight games. You know, we don't get it back to back usually. It's you know, play one a month later, two months later, a couple of weeks later, whatever it is, play them again. So yeah, it's it's interesting, but uh, it's part of coaching. I enjoy it. So now f football, you know, I'm interested to see what our staff's going to do to make the adjustments from game one to game two. That you know, they've they, they've got a lot of guys that coach in the NFL. The NFL gets that. A lot more, you know, in your division, you're playing everybody twice and all that. So it'll be interesting. I, I got a lot of confidence in our coaching staff there. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Well, as you mentioned, Coach, it's a long time off in between conference games, something we typically don't see too much of. But what have you uh, been focusing on in practice as the Crimson Tide start to get ready for Florida? Yeah, you know, we usually don't get a week off. So this is a little different, you know, a week between games one and two. I think what we did, we have four practices. We took the 
following day off. Then we pra- you know, we played Wednesday, took Thursday off, practiced Friday, Saturday, took Sunday off, go Monday, Tuesday. So on Friday and Saturday, we really just focused on us, you know, what we were not great at against Tennessee. Our transition D wasn't very good, you know, some stuff like that, our turnovers. You know, we did a little bit of Florida for day one. We didn't do much of anything, day two a little bit. And then today we really went all in on Florida. You know, we got the, the majority of the scout in. That our scout team did a good job prepping our guys. And, you know, and they're, they're playing a lot different than they were. They're playing a lot more like us than they were last year. They're, they're running a lot of five-out stuff. And, you know, they're doing a good job with it. They, um, they've got some good players, a lot of good transfers they've got in. You know, Castleton's playing better than he did last year. They're, um, you know, he's, he's one of the better big men in the league. So they've got some shot makers. That, and they've got some shot makers that are not uh, shooting it well right now, but they're, you know, a kid out of uh, Birmingham, Myron Jones, transferred from Penn State. He's, I mean, he's a career, like, 40% three-point shooter, and he's not shooting it as well for them early, but he's more than capable of going off. You know, we've got, you know, they've, they've got really good talent. They've won some big games, and, you know, we've we, we got to be ready to go. So our, our guys understand it. You know, we two years ago, the last time we played at Florida was my first year here, and we were up 20-some on them and gave, the, you know, gave it away. We ended up going to overtime. We ended up losing it. So... You know, it, we'd like to go back down there and have, have as good a start as we had the last time we played there, just close it a little bit better than what we did the first time. Crimson Tide getting ready to go to Gainesville and uh, the travel tomorrow and then the game on Wednesday night. And something I was curious about, and it doesn't have to be Florida-specific or any team or anything like that, but you go kind of one game at a time getting ready. Your staff's doing scouting reports and all these other teams. You have all that assigned. But when you watch a team on film for the first time, where do your eyes go first? What are you watching for the most? You know what, I, I like to just watch the whole game, you know, and then after I watch a, a few games, then I'll go back and just watch all the offensive clips or all the defensive clips and all the after timeout plays, all the underneath out of bounds plays, all the pick and roll defense, you know, but the first time I watch them, really looking to see kind of what the flow of the game is, how are they, you know, are they scoring in transition, where are they, you know, the, the main thing, you know. You know, like Houston, first time you watch them, it, it stands out how good they are on the, the offensive boards. You know, I've already looked at the analytics, but now I really get to see it on film. Like, how are they getting to the old boards? Who's doing it? And just, you know, general stuff like that. And then you start to get more narrowed focus with your focus as the game gets closer and closer. Are you being note taker as you're watching that? Do you have notebooks filled? For yeah, stuff? I've got notebooks. And then I also, you know, sometimes when you're traveling, uh, just make the notes on the computer that you can make like instance notes with our software we break down. But yeah, I'm, I got a notepad. I, I, and then I, then I got the notepad there, practice, what do we want to run? What do we do? You know, yeah, I, I take a lot of notes. I've always been a big note taker. Is that pretty similar as well when you're reviewing Alabama film, whether it's practice or games? Yeah. So I will always do uh, our own cleanup, particularly on the offensive side. Uh, when, you know, when we're flipping games quick, as we will start to do here in conference, I'll do the cleanup on both sides. You know, if we got a week between games, Charlie will do a defensive cleanup and I'll do an offensive cleanup. Adam will do an offensive cleanup with me as well, and then we'll come in. So I usually try to do that the night of the game because I'm up, I'm wired, adrenaline's flowing. I'm not going to be able to sleep for a while anyway, so I may as well get it broke down, so I'll break it down and do all that. It's kind of been my habit ever since I was a high school coach. Like, you know, shoot some nights that's three, four in the morning or whatever, like sure. depending on, you know, we've had some late, late tips. And by the time you get done with media and talk to family, friends, you know, get get some food in your system, you may not start breaking it down until after midnight or whatever. But I just thought, you know, it's either that or you got to wake up the next morning. Sometimes you got to be ready to go by 9, 10 the next morning. So I, I tend to do it just the night of the game, break it down, make all my notes and send it off to our video guy to, Edit, the, edit, trim the clips, you know, and put it, put it, organize them all, and I'll do all that stuff. Well, the Crimson Tide this week, a little bit of time away from Tuscaloosa at Florida coming up on Wednesday, and then following that, a trip to Missouri on Saturday. Just what kind of intensity do you want to see from your team playing on the road? What have they learned from some of the road environments they played in this year? You know what? We've only played in one true road environment. You know, that's the Memphis game. We didn't do very well in it. You know, I reminded them of that. The Gonzaga one... That's essentially a road game. I mean, you're playing Gonzaga in Seattle. And it's 18,000 people in there, and I thought about 17,900 of them were cheering for Gonzaga. So it technically wasn't a road game because it was a semi-neutral, but that was a road game. So that that's probably our best game we played. Memphis probably our worst game we played. So 
if you count those two for road games, we're a little bit inconsistent on the road right now. So, you know, I do think it's good that we played some big road games. Other schools in our league really haven't played any tough teams on the road, uh, non-conference. So I think it's good we've been in some tough environments and played in those. But, you know, you just got to keep playing. You can't let the crowd affect your energy. Obviously, the crowd gets behind the home team. And, you know, we should be playing with – much energy with as much focus as much effort as we possibly can no matter what the crowd's doing so you know just kind of remind them of that move to the next play you know they're going to hit some big shots and get a dunk just go to the next play as quick as you can and you know just move on so we're, we're you know we i thought last year you know we played really well on the road now it was different you know the, the some of the places seem to abide by the COVID rules a little differently than others they uh but no place was packed 100% full like we're going to see in some road environments this year. So you kind of go back to year one, and we weren't, you know, we didn't have as good a team for one, but we weren't as good on the road. So we, we reminded our guys, you know, we're going to have to be a little tougher, a little mentally tougher on the road this year with the way it is. And, you know, I'm looking forward to see how we uh, respond to this road challenge at Florida. Any extra comfort knowing that now you go two years, you've been to nearly every gym in the SEC, been on all these trips before. Any Does that help the coaching staff or players at all? I mean, there's some familiarity with it that we didn't have in year one. At least I've been in the buildings. And, you know, I don't – a lot of our players maybe haven't. You know, you think about who's actually played in a game two years ago. Shackelford, Jawan. You know, Jawan was Jawan's sitting injured, out. He yeah. was injured. I, Shackelford, right? That's about it, yeah. Quinterly sat out on the red shirt year, you know, because Keon Ellis and Joanne Gary, neither one of them, those are our main four guys that played last year. So, really, it's just Shackelford. So, a lot of these, you know, everybody but Shackelford, nobody else has played at Florida yet. So, you know, it, I don't know how much it helps. Like, the coaches have been in the building. I don't have to shoot in there, <laughs> you know, defend in there. So, it's, you know, but, again, it's it's 94 by 52. It's not the same everywhere, but essentially it's the same. We just got to lock in and. Do what we do. What we got to do on the road. Crimson Time getting ready to go to Gainesville to take on the Florida Gators coming up on Wednesday. And coach, before we let you go, what's your final message to the fans as we get ready for this week for Alabama that will be away from Tuscaloosa at Florida on Wednesday and then at Missouri on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, continue to cheer us on. Let's cheer the football team on to a national championship Monday, and let's pack the uh, place on Tuesday when Auburn comes to town. So we'll try to take care of business on these two road games and uh, see everybody back in Coleman. Uh, a week from tomorrow, we got a big one. A uh, week from tomorrow, so I, and we do appreciate the support we've getting. You know, everybody's getting behind us. Our players appreciate it. The coaching staff appreciates it. So we, we've got a great, you know, we've got a great crowd when, at the home games. We've had great crowds. Continue to do it that way, and just keep, continue to support us as much as you can, even when we're on the road. Coach Oates, thank you for joining us tonight here at Baumhauer's Victory Grill. Roll Tide. We'll see you soon. Roll Tide. Thanks, Roger. Appreciate you. Great visit last night with the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Nate Oates, in person at Baumhauer's Victory Grill. We won't have Hey Coach coming up next Monday night. You'll know why in just a moment. But uh, in a couple weeks when Hey Coach returns, uh, really hope to see a lot of Alabama fans at the restaurant getting to interact with uh, head coach Nate Oates along with some other head coaches from across Alabama athletics. We had a fun time, and we look forward to Alabama basketball coming up tomorrow as we start to take a look at our weekend schedule here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Well, men's basketball coming up for the Crimson Tide against the Florida Gators. 6 p.m. will be the tip-off from Exact Tech Arena. Our radio coverage will start at 5 o'clock across the network. And then on Thursday, we'll be back at it here in Tuscaloosa with another edition of this show, Crimson Drive, where we'll be visiting with voice of the Georgia Bulldogs, Scott Howard. Eli Gold will be joining us as well as hopefully Greg McElroy as well to preview the national championship game and get you ready for what's coming up on Monday. Then later that night, we will have Alabama women's basketball once again against Mississippi State. We'll have the courtside cam available as well here on our Facebook page and listen to that across the radio network. And then on Saturday, the men's basketball team taking on Missouri at 2.30 p.m. And then the college football playoff national championship game preview show. And we do know those times now from Indianapolis, 6.30 to 8 p.m. Central. So if you're in Indianapolis, just go to the Marriott downtown. You can watch that show starting at 7.30 coming up uh, Eastern time at 6.30 Central to 8 p.m. as Coach Saban will be joining Eli Gold, John Parker Wilson, Rashad Johnson from 7 to 8, breaking down Alabama's matchup coming up with Georgia in the national championship game. I don't think they'll be breaking down the women's basketball matchup against Georgia, but we will have that for you coming up on Sunday afternoon as I'll actually be in Athens, Georgia the day before the national championship game. I'm going to try to make it in Indianapolis as quickly as possible. 
possible for everything coming up on Monday. But again, we have women's basketball at Georgia on 2 o'clock on Sunday. And then from Indianapolis, 4 p.m. Central, it's Alabama against Georgia. Our coverage will start as we have three hours of pregame coverage. We'll have the game as well, postgame, completely getting you covered as Alabama looks to win its seventh national championship in the Saban era and 19th overall. Can't wait for the week ahead and so many chances for you to interact with us here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network, both on radio as well as throughout our social media channels. It's going to wrap up this Tuesday edition of Crimson Drive, but like we saw on the schedule a moment ago, we'll be back with you on Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock for the show, hopefully talking about an Alabama basketball win against Florida in men's basketball. And again, we'll really be previewing the football game coming up next week between Alabama and Georgia to determine a national champion. Thanks to our guests today, Christy Curry and Nate Oates, who joined us, uh, not only Coach Curry after the Auburn game, but on Hey Coach last night as well as Coach Curry, thank, or as Coach Oates. And thank you as well to Ethan Carabin, our Facebook Live producer, for putting this show together. For everybody with the Crimson Tide Sports Network and Alabama Athletics, this is Roger Hoover saying thank you for watching. Have a great start to your week. Good afternoon and roll tide.